Okay, sorry for the delay. I was just setting things up for the class today. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so today we're going to see source code examples in Java for stacks, queues, lists, array lists, link list. We've actually talked about all of these topics already. And uh, what I want to do is show you how easy it is to create it in Java. So I've got some examples that are going to show the Java classes, the packages being used, and how easy it is to actually just automatically implement a link list. And then I've got some that do it manually. I've got some link lists that are going to be queues, some link lists that are going to be stacks. So you know how to get these examples to try at home. And if you have your computer right now and you want to download it and try it, go into the data structures directory. This is what I was just doing a few minutes ago before the class started. And uh, I put it on the bottom. I probably should move it up so it's a little bit uh, easier to find. But if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see source code examples now. Stacks, queues, links, and array lists. Save the file to your desktop. It's a zip file. If you do that, you're going to see it. You're going to see my FTP program too. Let's see. You're going to see. Let me exit out of this. It'll download here. What you want to do is unzip it. Actually, we'll just I'll just go through the motions here. We'll have data structures as a subdirectory. If you go into Eclipse, I'm going to assume you have Eclipse installed and you have Java installed. This is on a MacBook. It's the same on a Windows system. Works the same way. Uh, if you don't have Java or Eclipse installed, go to the Object Oriented Programming class in Java. Follow the tutorials to download and install Eclipse in Java. Same instructions apply towards this class. Let me close this here. If I'm in here and I want to do a quick and easy import, I can go File, uh, Import, and I can import an archive file. I can import an existing projects into the workspace. I want to select the existing projects because that's what I have. Actually, that's what you do. I just exported out the one I have here. I'm going to import it back and I'll put it under a different name. If I go Next. I'm going to say uh, select the root directory of this project. Root directory is going to be on my desktop. I just, there we go, data structures right here. That's the one I zipped. When I unzip to the file, I got a subfolder called data structures. I'm going to say open. And I'm going to have to say some projects cannot be imported because they are already exist in the, yeah, they do already exist. Um, let me just do something real quick here. Let me change it. I already have it in here. Let's just do this. Data structures. <laughs> just change the name on it so it's not already in the project list. And let's see. Let's see if this works again. Uh, import. That's already okay. Anyway, if you don't have it in there, it's going to import it in. Mine, it already has it in there. All the files still are the same. Um, because what I did is I took data structures here, and you can export it, and you can export, you can import it. So, if that doesn't work for you, what you can do is open up that zip file. If you opened up the zip file and you get the data structures directory inside the source, you'll see all of the text, all of the uh, Java files. So this is where you're going to get the Java files. The import will work for you if you don't have it already in the workspace. But I don't want to mess up what I already have, so I'm going to leave it alone. I don't want to remove what I've got and put it back in. So If that doesn't work, you can actually uh, take this approach. Actually, I'll just show you this approach real quick. I'll just create a new project here. So I have this directory of all of these Java files, because this is actually handy information to know. When you, when you go to the internet, you find source code examples, which a lot of students like to do. You'll find .java files. If you click on the .java file and you bring it into Eclipse, it doesn't work. It won't work properly. So instead, what you can do is go to File and go New, Java Project. I'm not going to try and import. I'm just going to add these files into another project. And I'm going to say um, this is going to be Data Structure Examples. And I'm going to say finished. And then what I'm going to do is go over here. Once I get data structured examples out here, open it up. When I open it up, I'm going to see an empty source directory because nothing's in there. So then I can import. And I'm just right mouse clicking. 
I like to use the right mouse click on the item instead of the menu option, but there's an option up here as well to say import. Now I'm going to say file systems here and find that directory source here. And here's the interesting thing. You can't click on the files. They're all grayed out, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I, I kind of think that's a, probably a, a mistake. I think they should have made them clickable. But you have to go out here, click on it to actually open it up. I don't want that one. I don't even know what that one is. And go, okay, this looks good. Select all those files and go finish. And now I have them. Now I've got recreated the project, essentially. Um, if you try to export it, import it, that works as well. But you have to remove it. You can't have it in there twice, which is what I didn't want to do. So now that I have it, let's go through some of the examples. So we talked about the stack. I think the first thing we talked about was the stack in this class. And uh, here's a stack that is nothing more than an array implementation. That's an opening and closing bracket. Um, so if your programming skills are limited, I'm going to try and go through as much as I can in terms of what the source code is doing. Uh, but I can't teach programming and data structures all at once. <laughs> so if you haven't taken a Java course before, haven't taken C++, if you've taken C++, Java is actually kind of easy to pick up without even taking a class. If you don't have any background at all, come see me after class. I can give you a, the name of a book called Deedle and Deedle, How to Program. It'll get you up to speed within a couple weeks, believe it or not. And it sounds accelerated, it sounds like, you know, overly optimistic, but it's not. It, it actually is a really good book that'll, that'll get you up pretty fast. Uh, but this is um, just the same way that you would do it in C, and it's an array-based stack implementation. Just to show you, you know, with, through programming, how the data structures concepts that we've already talked about are implemented. And this is what you'll be doing in your assignment. So we'll look at assignment number one before today's over with. So you can kind of see what you're going to do there. And after you look at assignment, after you look at these examples, and you look at assignment number one, you're going to go, oh, you just gave me all the answers. So I'm really giving you all the answers, essentially. But I want you to put it together. I'm not going to just give you the completed assignment. You'll have to have you assemble it. <laughs> So, but the concept of assembling it, you'll learn what it is you're doing, hopefully. Not a programming course, so you're more than welcome to cut, paste, and steal information from any source you want. I'm actually going to give it to you today, so you don't even have to go and look anywhere further. So, but some students want to. In Java, everything has to be created in the form of a class, and so we have this class, and this is really a bad programming example, because I've got two classes in one file and I'm calling it mystack.java and I know that so then you're sitting kind of far away can't see this <laughs> so it's called mystack.java is the name of the file and this is from that download I just did a few minutes ago and we have mystack in here which is the name of the, of the stack file but I also put the driver program in here this is when I said I know I'm not following like real programming style I'm kind of, and you can do this yourself you don't have to have separate files uh, for the Java, for, for the driver, but here's my driver, what I call the driver program. It's the main that's going to run this class. I put it all in the same file. What you do for your programming assignments is completely up to you. If you don't want to use Java, you don't even have to use Java. You can use C++ if you want. So in traditional programming, you always want to make the data members private, member functions public, so that you can access these data pieces through the member functions and the data pieces we've got are maximum size because this is an array stack it's going to be a, this is a variable name called stack array and this is a regular old long array initialization and um, what this says is it's going to create whatever we set maximum stack to it's going to create essentially a, a stack with array elements zero through the maximum length and um, this doesn't have to be long. I can, this can be, uh, this could be hold integers if we wanted to. It can hold floats, doubles. So this is just the data type of the array. Of, and it's basically the, the stripped down version of an array implementation without using anything from Java and none of the built-in packages, nothing. It's just a simple, you know, C++ compatible. So you can take this code, probably put it in C++ and get the same results. I've got a, uh, data member here to indicate the top because if you remember a stack we 
push stuff on the top and we pop stuff off the top. So we work from one end of the structure. So we're going to work with one end of the array, essentially. This is my constructor for the class, my stack, and it takes on S, which is going to be the size of my stack. It's an integer size, because we're going to use that in here. So my stack, excuse me, stack array, right here, stack array, which is the array of longs, is going to be equal to new long stack, which is going to be maximum size. Maximum size is going to be equal to S here. So I've created a Basically, a stack that you can create on the fly in any one of your programs that is going to, you know, create a stack of 5, create a stack of 10, essentially. So it's going to automatically populate 10 into the array. So we have an array of size 10. And then here's where the uh, textbook stuff comes in. We have methods to push, to pop, to peak, is empty, is full. Because what do we really want to do on a stack is push something on to the stack, is when we're going to put something on. And then we're going to pop something off the tap. stack, removes it. And what are we going to remove? We're going to remove the top item. So top is really just going to be the integer value of the stack. If I drew this out, um, I could go uh, stack array, because here actually I'll just put it right here, because what well, we really have a stack array, zero, whoops, And then we have stack, this is going to give me an error. This is not code, I'm just giving you an example. Stack array 1, I'm not going to go through 10. I'm just going to go you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. Many uh, array elements. We're always working on the top one. So we have a top, and then we have a next, new top, and then we have a new top, and then we have a new top, and then we have a new top. As we push stuff off, the top keeps going down this way uh, through the stack. So we start the stack out at the top is going to be equal to negative 1. So when we increment it, we're going to, be, we're going to start with 0, essentially, which is the 0 index element. Let me remove this so my code will compile correctly. Oops. So here's our plus plus stack. We're incrementing it before I didn't go top plus plus. I went plus plus top because actually the increment, you know, you could... It probably would work both. I didn't test it, but anyway, we want to increment before we use it. We can't use negative one, so we're going to increment it so it's zero. At this zero, when we push something on, we're taking a long from the command line and say push five, push ten. It doesn't have to be long. I could have used integer values or something. And then uh, it's going to be equal to this. So the array top gets put on, and then we go top minus minus if we're going to pull it off. And it, basically this, this top is representing the index location in the array that we're pushing and popping to. And the pushing and popping is going to put something on or take something off, essentially. The peak is going to tell us what's on top. What's the last one? The is empty is going to say, is top equal to negative 1? If top is equal to negative 1, we know we've got an empty, we have an empty array. And, and that's our placeholder for the last element in the array. And then is full, does top equal to maximum size minus 1, which is uh, if we have 5, then we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to be, if it equals that, we know the array is full. We can't add any more. So we could put some elaborate error checking in here. Um, for example, arrays we know are not dynamically allocated. They're statically allocated from the lecture. So we know that... Uh, if we create an array, stack array of five, we only have five elements. So on number six, if we try to do a push, you'd think logically it might want to check first. <laughs> and then come back and say, hey, the array is full. So if plus plus top is equal to maximum size, then system out, the array is full. Else, stack, top array, put it on the top. So, which is a great way of adding, you know, and this is like the most simplest kind of implementation you could possibly put together. And let's go uh, down to the driver program. Driver program is going to take my stack, which is this class, and make a new instance of it, and we're going to put 10. We're going to put 10 of them in there. And we're going to push 20, push 40, push 60, push 80. And then while it's not empty, and I've got an error with this one now, I, I showed you the first example with an error. 
and the index is going to be off by one <laughs> on the pop. So long uh, value is equal to my the, the stack dot pop. System out, print out the value. So we're going to go through, and while it is is empty, we're running this method here, and this is going to come back true or false. It's going to return top is equal to negative one. It's a boolean return. It's going to come back, and so we're going to say while it's while we're, while we're not while it's not empty, while it's not true, while it's false, because when it's empty, it's true. Uh, then we're going to go long value is equal to you know get get a variable here. We don't actually have to do this. We could stick this in here if we wanted to. We don't have to actually copy it to a var variable. Put the variable in the system outs. So you can design this differently. What I'm just doing is going through it while, in, while it's not empty and printing out all the values. If I run it, and uh, now come to think of it, I put left the error in there on purpose. If I run it, I'm going to get an exception. No, I don't get an exception. Oh, I took it out. Uh... I had a typo and I guess I fixed I thought I didn't save it, but I guess I did. There's one of them that actually has an error that I didn't fix yet. <laughs> it's because the index is off by one. It's, it uses the wrong counting and then it tries to read past the array values and it actually puts an error out there. But I forgot, I didn't actually even, I took, I fixed, anyway. Long story short, what we've got is the, um, the stack that we're going through and it's printing out the values here with the pop and the pop uh, is taking the array top minus minus one top minus minus one top minus minus one so it's going the top keeps going down so it's working from one end of the array meaning the top and it's popping and pushing items onto the stack from the top of the array very simple probably the most simple example you're going to run into out there in terms of the complexity this one is as good as one that would be uh, Actually, let me make this bigger so you can actually see. This is the outputs. It's only going to print out the value, and the value is going to be the popped off value. The value is 80, 60, 40, 20. You might notice it's in the exact opposite order that we put it in. So it's it's going from 80, 60, 40, 20 in reverse order. So, and it's just the way that the, the pop is working in terms of how it's pulling items off. Um, so you might notice that uh, we didn't use any of the Java features with this example. And it's pretty basic. It just uses an array. That is actually what's meant by an array implementation of a stack. Great for small little things when you know the exact number and you know how many items you're going to put on there and you know what you're going to do with it. Let's make the, uh, let's turn that stack into a linked stack. When we create a linked stack, we're going to use a list here. We're going to create a link list. And let me see if I want to do that first or I want to do this one first. Uh, hold on one second. Array list example. Let's skip the link for a second, linked list for a second, and talk about array list. So here, um, because there's, there's an order to this madness here. <laughs> so what we first saw was the basic implementation of the array being used to create a stack. Now we're going to create what's called an array list. And we're going to say, how can we simplify this process? Because we don't want to use arrays, but we want to use the Java language to help us. Because the Java language has built in in the util package. We have a built in list of containers, and I'm going to go over, I'll mention it, I'm just going to look at the list today. Array list, link lists, and uh, we can create a queue from an array list, we can create a stack from an array list. But the array list is like, a, why, why make the user create their own array and have their own functionality? Let's just create a package for it, a built-in class. And so we have one, it's called array list. And in this particular example, we are doing what's called typecasting on the array list. It's not really kind it's a specific type conversion is what this is all about. We're creating a string array list in this example. So the array list class is uh, not if you notice in here before well I got a student down here. I don't know if I'm using the student in anything. Uh, I am 
I'm using a student further down the road uh, because I've got a student array list. Okay, so in here, if I wasn't using this object inside of the array list, I wouldn't actually have to have a separate class implemented. In the first example, we implemented a class for the array, and we called it a stack, my stack. And in the, in the driver program, I made an instance of my stack and used it like an object. In here, we have the built-in object array list, and we just create an object of the type that we want to store. So the most important thing to remember is to import this, put this at the top, create your class that you're going to do in Java. Right here in main, because I already have it created for me, it's right here. I'm going to create a new instance. I'm going to say array list. And here's the funny part. You can say string, float, double, anything you want. And just know that this is the, pretty much the syntax to it's not typecasting, it's explicit type conversion. If I left it out, I could put any object I wanted in there. I could put combinations of different types of objects. The only problem is there's no error checking. And then some compilers will give you some errors with that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold strings in here. So I created a new instance of the ArrayList object, and I called it ArrayL. In ArrayLs, I added cat, added car, added brother, added basketball. Mm -hmm. And you're like wondering, where did this add come from? <laughs> so we can add, remove, is it empty? This is what that power of uh, the Java package is actually giving us, is the automation. We don't have to create it on our own. We have it already built in. These are methods that we can call on instances of objects that are created of array list. And create implementations of stacks and implementations of queues from an array list. Uh, so we're going to system out. This is a string array list. And then here, we're going to take the array size as an example, and then go through it just as if it were an array. Take the array list dot size and print out, you know, get, get i, and i is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the size of the array list. And then uh, we're going to print a little line here to separate out the output. And then we're going to use an interesting, we're going to use a, an array list, and this one's going to hold student objects. This is more common in terms of your average implementations. And the student object is actually down here, class of student. Student is, uh, and this is from your Java class actually, name, age, school, <laughs> grade marks, you know, get name, set name, get age, set name. This is your, your classic model of a student, uh, this.marks, this, you know, return it, set it. Um, you can't get any more basic than that in terms of an implementation of a student. And up here, though, the only difference between this and what we just did a few minutes ago with the strings is we've changed the type to student to hold student objects. And now we have a student list, which is going to be equal to a new array list. And in here we have student. S1 is going to be equal to new student. We created a new student. S1.setName, S1. You know, get. We're running the methods of that particular, um, that particular object. And uh, we've created another student, S2, we've done that. And now we're just going to add these two students by using the add, S1 and S2. We're adding them to the student list, the array list that we've gotten here. And then we're going to print them out. Same thing as we did before. Actually, it's the same example. But instead of using strings, we're using objects. So this kind of shows you the power of taking and creating an object, taking the object and putting it inside of an array list. And now we have an array of objects. But each one of these students has all of this information in there for us. Um, which we have a detail of the students. We're printing out the names. and What we're doing in here is we're going student list get i, and we're treating that as the object. This is the object we want, and get name, get age, get school. This is pretty common, and it uh, creates a nice kind of interface. So even though it's in an array, we can still get each one of the array elements and get at the name and the age and the telephone number and stuff like that, whatever's in there. So if I run this guy, run as an application. My output on the bottom is a, this is a string array list of four. The cat, the bar, the brother, the ball that I added in. This is an array list of two. This is one student. This is the other student. Pretty basic. Pretty standard. I think that. So, baby steps. We're a little bit more complicated now. <laughs> so, uh, let's see, the array list, queue example, stack example, uh, we can use, we don't have, to, okay, so 
we don't actually have to use an array. So, so far we created an array manually. We used an array list implementation. Now we say we know we want a stack. And uh, we were actually creating a stack in that array list as well. It was just kind of, actually, it could be a QR stack. Depends upon how we're going to access the methods. And that's the interesting thing about it. It's only which, which end of the list are you working with? Are you working with both? You're working with one end? So that's essentially the differences. Just as we saw array list, now we have a stack, which is part of util, that is a special implementation of a stack that uses the pop and the push. So instead of uh, insert, remove, add, remove, all of those other functionalities, we have more stack-specific commands and methods that we can call. So here we have a stack example, and we have a main in here, and that's it. We don't have any objects or anything. And you see all this stuff here? It's because I haven't specifically casted it, a type to it. If I put my mouse over here and I look at it, it wants me to add a type argument for stack, like I did with that array list. I said student, or I said string. I could, or I could just leave it alone. In fact, if you're not working with Eclipse and you're doing this out in a notepad, you're not going to get that. You know, this is perfectly fine legal code. It's just that Eclipse wants me to declare a specific type. It doesn't know. Otherwise, what ends up happening is I can put, I'm putting strings in here, but I could put mix match things, and technically it would actually work. Uh, but to be consistent among the data use, it's not bad to keep it all the same type, but we don't have to. Does it, we could break the rules of the array, actually, the array implementation. So stack s is equal to new stack s dot push s dot push s dot push. So we're pushing on Java source and these are just words. And we're gonna system out next. And then we have the s dot peak. Uh, the peak uh, we didn't actually see implemented in the first example. The peak is gonna give. Look at the look inside of the stack and give me the next item. So we can say you know print it out is gonna give us our last item. We're going to peek in there and get the last item. Then we're going to push on support. So Java source and support we've got so far. Then we're going to pop one off. Pop one off and then we're going to push a, a dot on there for the end of the sentence. And we're just going to you know, play around a little bit. We actually have a search in here that's built in to the stack. We didn't actually create a search. If we created a search, that's a lot of work actually in an array based implementation. But we have it built in for us. And the way you find out about this is you go Google this, look at the Java docs for stack, and you see all the methods. And you go, oh, look, there's a search. Look, there's a replace. Look, there's a, you know. And you can take advantage of all that stuff. So while the uh, count is not, is, not, is not equal to negative 1 and the count's larger than z 1, you know, pop one off, count minus minus, and then print out s.pop s.empty. So I'm going to print out those elements. So now if I run it, I get next, this is that command up here, next, we actually printed the word next. The next word was and, which was this, if we peeked in, we saw and, which was the last one put on, which is going to be the first one we take off. So, And then if we take it off, we're going to push support, and it, we put support on there, so we got support, Java, true, we popped off. We popped off and, so it, that's and's not on there anymore. Uh, but excuse me, and's right here when we printed it out, but it's not going to be in our list. So basically, we have the items coming off in reverse order as we put them on, essentially. Um, in fact, we have the word true being printed out, and it's being printed out from. Did we put it true on there? Mm. It could be coming back from a, a pop. Uh, or is empty. It's coming back from the is empty is returning true. So we have true being printed out on the screen right here. So this kind of lets you know uh, that you're actually functioning, that you're doing something. And what you're going to do for your programming assignments for this course is put together a little sample like this. They don't have to be any more difficult than this. And put like a little driver program right in here if you want. You can put it all in one file if you want. You don't have to separate them out into tons of files and complicate everything. And you can use anything you want. You can use a built-in stack or an array list. You can use anything you want. And uh, which kind of is a good, it's a good spot 
I'm going to go back. I have more examples, but let's just take a look at that first assignment so we know what we're looking at. And uh, have I shown you the first assignment yet? No? Good. Okay. At this point, the term is like, what have I shown which class? <laughs> the good thing for you is I only have one section of this class, so you never confuse this one. The Java class, I've got multiple sections of it, so I can never remember what. Ah, this one's going to be a linked list. Okay, good. So we're going to look at linked lists next. But let's take a look at what we've got going on here. So the data structure for the linked list, assignment number one. You're going to write a program that you can use as a database of students' information. Or a department. Well, we just have a student class I just showed you a few minutes ago. You can use that, modify it to add department information. The program uh, should be able to dynamically allocate and deallocate storage of the student's records using a linked list. And you must use a linked list to keep track of the list, uh, keep track of the list of items for the program. The database should have the following fields: first name, last name, course code, grade for the student. I actually had marks and first name and last name. We didn't have a course, but we can, you can add that. You can modify the student class I just showed you. You can use a structure, a class, or any data type that you want to keep track of this information. If you want to create it into a structure, you can, or you can use that class. The program should display a menu. So I'll leave this to you to put together. It's not too bad. It's a text-based, text console-based application. You don't have to do a graphic user interface to this. Just print out a simple text using some system outs and create a loop that takes in information from the user that says select an option, one through nine. Nine is to quit. One is going to insert, delete. You can probably tell what's going to go on here. You're going to run each one of the methods with each one of these options. So you're going to insert a new record, delete a record, search the database by last name, print a range in the database. Uh, let's see, find a class average for the course. That might actually have to do some calculations. The insert function should work regardless of the position. So position 0 refers to the position before the first record. Any position greater than the length of the database should be put in the last position. Okay. Similarly, the delete position should work for any one of the positions, make sure that it works when you're deleting the first, the middle, the last. So you have to, in a linked list, if you remember, um, you actually had to make sure that you were doing the correct operation, whether you're at the beginning of the list, or whether you're at the end of the list, or if you're in the middle, it's slightly different. So that's what that's talking about. And now uh, what do we got here? If the student is not found, all records associated with the student should be printed as a screen. If the student's found, excuse me, uh, print function should work regardless of the range requested. So. Uh, to compute the class average, first search for the field of the course code because you're going you're to put students in courses and then you're going to assign a course code to each one of the students and then find out how many students are in one, one class or the average. Only average of the students with matching course codes. Implement the program in any programming language using any technique that you, you want to meet the requirements as described above. So the requirements as described above, you can actually take from the menu. We need an insert, we need a delete, we need a search, we need a print, and a find. So you're creating these menu options uh, in terms of functions or method calls that you're going to do. And um, let me just take a quick peek here, actually. Now we're talking about assignments. There's only four of them that you have to do for this class section. It's not too bad. We do have a midterm now. So it's a little more time consuming. Assignment number two. Stacks and queues. I actually just showed you a stack. I'm going to show you a queue in a few minutes. I figured I'd do all this stuff first and then go back to the examples. <laughs> so, 
Saxon Cues, the theme of assignment number two. Um, I probably should have put this one first, switch the order. But you can do these out of order. This one actually is probably, this one actually might even be easier than the link list. But you'll see in a few minutes, the link list is fairly easy. For those of you who have had C++ before and have created link lists using pointers, it's not that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Unless you're afraid to try Java and you really want to do C++, you're more than welcome to play around with pointers and do a, your own implementation. But this one here is just what I showed you a few minutes ago. We have stacks and queues. We have companies and people often buy and sell stocks. So it's a stock market program. Often they buy the same stock for different prices and different times. So say a person owns 1,000 shares of certain stock, such as a checkpoint. Let's say they call it the stock. Um, she may have bought the stock in an amount of 1,000 shares over a 10 different times with 10 different prices, perhaps. So you're going to analyze two different methods of accounting. First in, first out, and last in, first out, which is going to give us our stacks and our queues. Accounting using the following. Uh, accounting used to determine the cost of the stock. So this is going to test your accounting knowledge, too, I guess. Uh, this information is not really accounting, it's just counting. Uh, this information is typically calculated when a stock is sold to determine its profit or loss was made. In your version of the first in, first out accounting, the price of the commodity is averaged starting with the first purchase of the item. So say we sell 250 shares of stock according to this method, the price is determined by averaging the price of the first 250 shares bought. In your version of the last in, first out accounting, the price of the commodity is averaged starting with the last purchase of that item. And then uh, you say 250 shares of stock according to the method. The purchase price is determined by averaging the price of the last 250 shares bought. So you're just starting at one end or the other end in terms of your accounting. If you can't figure out the accounting formula, which is nothing more, it's just averaging. If you can't, don't worry about it. You can come up with your own creative idea of how to implement it. I'm really just looking for your stack and for your queue. So, so in the assignment, you'll be using a queue for storing the first in, first out, and a stack for last in, first out. And you're going to use an array-based implementation. I just showed you that for your stock-based implementation and a linked list implementation for your queue. Well, in a few minutes, make note, I'm going to show you a linked list queue. <laughs> so may, you may use any programming technique that you want to accomplish this task. You can do it by hand or you can do the Java code. So both the stack and the queue should have records with the following fields. And this is just some input. A name of a stock, name of a, which is going to be a string or an integer. The name of the shares of the stock, the number of shares, the purchase price. You can assume that the first element of the structure is the security first bot, and the second is the second, etc. Your program should have the user able to enter information about various stocks, amounts of shares, stuff of that nature. And please uh, follow uh, this following menu, print one for a new stock, print two, press two. So you can put together again another, in fact you can use the same template as used for the first program. You can put together in that. Now I know why I put this one second in my mind. This is actually two programs in one. <laughs> you have to use two structures. First one, you only have to use one. Uh, they put together a little text based menu. It says, hey, well, number one, press one for new stock. Two for that one or that one. If one is pressed, the user needs to enter the stock symbol. There's going to be a number or a string. And the number of shares and the price. So you can keep objects if you want for the stocks, make a stock object. Just like you created a person object for the students. Um, you can use any method you want. It could be an object, or it actually could be a structure. You don't want to do object oriented uh, programming. So that's pretty much it on the stacks and the queues. Let me just take a quick peek at number three just to make sure. I think number three is going to be on a totally different topic. It is. So you can uh, really only look at the first two at this point for the material that I've covered so far. The third one is going to be on search and binary search and binary search trees, which we haven't talked about searching yet. So, Let's go back to take a look at those goodies in the uh, source code examples. So we want to do a linked list. Uh, let me take a look here. 
Exactly. Let's take a look at that Q example. So in a queue, I think I believe I said you wanted to use a linked list implemented as a queue. So we don't actually have a queue. We have a stack, but we don't have a queue, which is weird. But we have a linked list. Linked list natural behaviors in a queue. <laughs> so we can do a queue real easily by creating a linked list. So here we've got a Java util linked list that we're going to call here. And this is going to be an import. And from the other imports, oh, we do have a queue. Um, I think I've overridden the queue, though. It's okay. Mm, let's not worry about it. We do have a queue. I, I misquoted a few minutes ago. We have a stack and a queue, a linked list, a list. And I have to jog my memory on that again. Or look up the Java docs, and you'll find all of the different uh, objects that are contained in this particular util. Uh, but what we're primarily concerned with here is uh, understanding the concept. So I've created uh, public queue, not using not using that one actually. Queue is going to be equal to new linked list. So I'm creating a linked list as a queue. So I've got queue queue is equal to new uh, linked list. Queue dot add queue dot add. these are the same uh, these are the same methods. Uh, these these this, the add using the add method to add features. And again, I didn't specifically specify the type. So it wants me to add the type argument to Q, which I believe are going to be strings here. So if I actually did this, it would actually fix it if I added the type argument. It puts a string in here and then add the type argument. So I fixed that, that little irritating warning message. <laughs> You don't have to do that. It's not going to affect anything. So this queue is created as a linked list. This is what the assignment is actually having you do, the second assignment. So using the add method, we're going to add something. It should, uh, should anything go wrong, the exception should hopefully be uh, thrown, which is kind of interesting. I haven't put the exception handling in here, and in the assignments never mentioned exception handling. If you want to experiment with that, if you, your queue makes a mistake, you'll see the exception. All you have to do is throw it. And if you've taken the Java class, you know how to throw exceptions. So you know how to use the throw on the exception, and then you essentially be, deal with the behavior and put a message out and says, hey, the queue's too big, or there's no items in the queue. Or, you know, you tried to do something that was wrong. Using the offer, oh, here's a new one, offer method to add items. Should anything go wrong? Uh, it, the, it will just return false. So this is the interesting thing, and as I highly recommend as a kind of an added supplement to the homework, go out look at the Java docs for, if you don't, it's not going to be in a book, it's going to be posted online, and you'll see it. All the different method calls, offer does the same thing as add, except for it has different exception handling. So some of the names are different on the methods. They do, they're pretty much doing the same functionality, but one's not going to return it's going to return false. The other one's going to actually throw an exception. And um, it's interesting, though. There's so much duplication, but it's for a reason. It's for whether or not the purpose of you. If you want the built-in exception handling, you have it. So, removing an item. So you can first remove an item from the queue. If the queue is empty, a Java util, no such element exception will be thrown on the remove here. You can check that the item is the first in line without removing it by doing an element. Get the element, and we'll get a no such element exception thrown. And we can remove the first item by going a poll. Well, if we do that, that's kind of like the remove, but we don't have any exception handling. We have it's going to return false instead. Personally, I'd go with the standard and then implement the exception handling. But if you don't want those funny exceptions, sense and handling going on and you want to just check true or false then you can take the the poll instead you can take the option in, of using the other methods checking uh, what item is the first in the line without removing the queue the peak again the peak isn't going to be like element elements going to actually throw an exception or excuse me um, yeah, element is going to actually throw an exception if there's no element peak is just going to come back false 
So in our implementation of this particular queue, I've got down here on the bottom, new queue example dot queue, which is another way of, of running queue from queue example, and queue example is this class up here, queue example. And we're running dot dot Q to say give me a new object of that. I just kind of use this in this example to kind of show you yet another way of actually making an instance of an object <laughs> from inside of an object. So you may notice that there's a lot of different ways. Java actually provides a lot of flexibility in terms of how you're making instances of objects. And here we have the output if I run the program which I just did a few minutes ago, remove here we got remove element, element Whole peak. We don't have any errors here, but what you can do with this example is create some errors and see how the behavior differs and see what, how the exceptions might be thrown in different situations. And then this is kind of a step <coughs> towards adding exception handling to your queue. Because one of the things that might go wrong is, you know, you might not have any elements left and you're gonna, your program logic is going to fail. It was not the fault of your queue, it's just that you didn't then deal with the exceptions that might occur. All right, moving right along. We started out with a stack example, I believe. So we did. Yep, we did the stack example. We did the queue example just a few minutes ago, I believe. Link list in queue. Yep, we did that one. We start now. Actually, we started out with my stack. My queue is a different one, very similar to the last example we just went over, so this is not a bad one to start with again. It's going to use a linked list implementation of a queue. Uh, there is a queue there is a queue class that we could choose if we wanted to. Again, we can add the arguments here, and it's going to be a plain old object because we're not paying attention. And, you know, up here, actually, I want to take this out because I don't want to mess up my examples. But. I have a linked list list, and in my queue default constructor, we're going to create a new linked list, and the list is going to be equal to new linked list. And then we have the is empty nq dq, which is what we normally get with queues. So we're taking a linked list, and we have all the behavior that's associated with the linked list. So we know how to put something on and take something off. What we're doing in this particular my queue class is creating the queue behavior to turn the standard linked list into a queue, and to do that. We have nq that's going to, an item is added to the back of the queue. So it pins the item to the end of the queue. So it adds an item, list.item. And uh, here's going to be is empty, list.size. We're essentially just doing our own implementation. Uh, the dq, if it's empty, it's going to return false. If there's an item, it's going to pull the item off. And the item at the front of the queue is returned and deleted from the queue. So it returns all the null. It null if the precondition is not met. Object item is equal to list dot get item one. So we're using the get to pull off an item. We're calling in a DQ. This is one of the things you, you often see actually is um, you see the peak, the NQ, the DQ, and the terminology is just used. This functionality is a linked list, <laughs> but the terminology that we're using to manipulate the linked list is through the NQ, the DQ, all the vocabulary of the naming of how we're going to push and pop NQ, DQ, an item to be particular if we're talking about a stack or if we're talking about a queue. So, kind of, some people look at this and they go, oh, why bother? Just call it by what it's called. And the other examples use the real words pop and push if it's a stack. You know, a link list. So this is really a link list. So we can remove an element, check an element. But it just kind of shows you how you can uh, create your own higher level of abstraction to it. And the peak, get the last item. And here's our main program. And this one, I believe, is the one that has the error. Uh, my queue, the queue, is equal to new queue, create a new instance, make a new, we've got a new stack. It's really a queue. <laughs> these examples are, uh, these examples are a bit, actually, you know what the problem is? It's a stack implementation called a queue, and it throws an error because I took a stack and I created a queue out of it, but I forgot to fix the functionality. So I believe this is the one that's going to throw an error. Let me just see real quick. This one's going to throw an exception, and I believe it's going to be an exception for the item not found because it's going to go past. Yeah, it does. <laughs> there was exception 40. 
index out of bounds because I'm uh, and actually printed out 60 and 80, which is interesting. Uh, up here, I've got 20, 40, 60, 80. It 40 printed, and we got an exception of 40, 60, 80. These are those numbers that are being printed out from the output down here. But the implementation is messed up because uh, the purpose of it was to actually kind of show you how you can take a linked list and turn it into a queue by taking the functionality and just you know putting it into different methods that are called different things and queue, do queue, stuff like that. Unfortunately, though, I didn't fix the behavior. <laughs> it's a stack, really. It's acting like a queue, but then it's not printing out correctly. So, Just remember, my queue is the one that's going to throw an error message on the other ones. All of the other ones work perfectly fine now. And we looked at linked stack. I believe we looked at that one already, right? So that was the linked list. Uh, or did we? No? I don't think we did, actually. I, well, I probably should just like have named these with numbers, like one, two, three. <laughs> I would have remembered which one I was on. Ah, we got a linked list. So here we have a manual implementation. Here we had a class called link stack. Yeah, because we've looked at the link link queue. We might as well look at the link stack. Um, what do we have? We have a link list is going to be a list, and uh, we this is the data type link list. Um, and you might have noticed uh, I don't include the util directory here. I believe it's still going to work. No, here we go. Link list is down here. Created our own. We didn't use the built-in link list. Instead, we created our own link list class. It's on the bottom of the source code. And uh, it has a link. And the link is first. And so the link is right here. Class link. So this is as complicated as you could possibly make it, which is, which is you know, interesting. Because we could have just used the link list class. <laughs> Instead, we have the bare bone link, and the link is the data, and then the next, data next. So if you're a C++ programmer, you'll love this example. Because in C++, when you create a link list, you create a, dyna a dynamically allocated object that has a piece of data, and then it has a next. And the next is a pointer to the next piece of data. And each piece of data points to the next, to the next, to the next. So you have to have a pointer. Actually, you have to create a new object. Then you have to have a pointer to the next object, to the next object. And usually those two components create that singly. If you remember last lecture, I talked about doubly and singly linked lists. That creates the one direction of the next creates that singly structure, or we're singly linking links objects together linked objects together. And the doubly is if we go both ways. So if we have a next and a previous with us. So if we can traverse the list in both directions, forward and back, we have a doubly, double link list. Doubly, I call it. So this is a singly. <laughs> so we have the data, and then we have next. Outside of using pointers, this is about as complicated as you can get. We don't have to use pointers because it's Java. So here we have a um, constructor. Data is equal to D. D is a long. So this list is holding long, longs, and we have a display list. It's going to print out data, and system out data plus space to display the list, and uh, our display list uh, function over here. I should say method over here is uh, going to be uh, the link current is equal to first, and then we go from the first to the sec. So we go current equals it doesn't equal null, then current dot next. So current dot display list go down here and print it out, and then we go current next current next current next. This is very much a Java implementation of a C plus plus linked list, about as close as you can get. But we don't have to create pointers. We have an insert at the first, at the beginning. So the linked list new list is equal to list D. Put it put it, a data entry in there, and then the new link dot next is equal to first. And then first is equal to new link. You don't have to do this at all for the first assignment, which is a linked list. This is just showing you another option that you might have available to you. And C++ people can generally relate to this more than they can the Java examples. Because they're, they're, they're used to doing it the long way to begin with. So let's go back up to the, uh, to the linked stack. We have a linked list list. Uh, the linked stack, the default constructor is just creating a new list. 
And then we have um, insert into the list, pop off, push onto a list, pop off of the list, check to see if it's empty, and display the stack. And uh, here's our main. Our main is just going to well, create a new link, linked stack. The stack dot push this. The stack. Oh, this is the example. <laughs> this is the one I took and I turned into a queue because I'm looking at the output. Going, oh, this looks familiar. This, this is where I made the mistake on the queue. I added the queue and queue, the DQ, but I didn't change the functionality of the push and the pop. It's going off like a stack. So the two of them are causing an exception when you combine them together. But this is exactly like the last example we just looked at. That didn't compile. This one will compile actually. And. Um, we're displaying it. Then we're we're gonna push pop. We're gonna push on. We're gonna push on, and then we're gonna pop some stuff off. So if we run it, we should get no exception. Ah, good. <laughs> stack. The value of the stack. We push some more on. We popped them off. The value of the stack again. So this one you could convert it to a queue if you finished it. It's the same. It's really the same example, but I took away, I took away the link, the link part of it. May extended it from, uh, imported the link list object, created it from link list. I believe we have two more. We have the link list. Uh, da, 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 da. This is using interfaces. Okay. Yet another way that you can do this is you can implement your own linked list class. So the class implements a linked list that can contain any type of object and implements the nested linkable interface. Unless you took the job, of course, you don't know about interfaces. An interface, let me just explain that real quick for those people who don't know about it or have forgotten. An interface is sort of like inheritance, but it really isn't. It's sort of like an abstract class. Interface classes have abstract methods inside of them that, that aren't implemented. That say, if you implement this interface, you should implement these methods. And you can use multiple interfaces in a class that's inherent. You can basically implement multiple interfaces, although you can only extend one class. So instead, what we've done is use the interface, and the interface is linkable. That gives us the linkable um, behavior. It gives us our next, our front, our tail, all of the linked list linked linkable items that we're implementing inside of our linked list class. So we've created this class called linked list instead of using, you know, again, this is yet another way of doing it. You don't have to do any of this, but this is just showing all the different options you have. And some people ask, well, why do we have so many different options? Flexibility. If there was just one way of doing it, then you know it may not work for all situations. So what if you don't want to just use the generic link list object and you want to create your own link list object and you want to interface with the linkable, you know, linkable functionality, then this is the way you're going to do it. So the interface defines a method required by the object that can be linked into a linked list. So our interface linkable is going to create linkable get next, which returns the next element, and linkable set next, uh, which sets the next element in the list. Class has a default constructor. Here it is here with uh, linkable get head, linkable head. Uh, we don't actually, I didn't actually implement this, this is commented out. If we wanted to put a default constructor in, in fact, you can take this code and modify it for yourself if you want to. Um, we have the head, which is going to be our first item in the linkable list. And then we were synchronizing, and this is an interesting thing. The word synchronize is causing, um, in thread programming in Java, we use synchronize to, keep, to basically make the threads communicate with each other and not fight. So we can't have a deadlock. We can't have a race condition. Instead, one will wait for the other. There will be a pause and a wait. So synchronize on a method synchronizes it so we can only have, if, if we created multiple lists simultaneously, they'll go in order, essentially. So we can get the, get, get the head. And we've actually put synchronize on, I've put synchronize on all of the different method calls. Optional, you don't really have to. It's just a way of doing, again, more exception handling or prevention, error prevention. Uh, so we, this one here is going to return the first node, get head. 
insert at head method, insert at tail method. This is a doubly linked list, by the way. It can, each item in the list can go forward or it can go backwards because we're keeping track of both the head and the tail. Um, get next, running the method here on the tail. Remove from the head, remove from the tail. So it gives us our doubly kind of concept. And then we have the basic remove, the underlying concept of how to take something in and take something out. Um, and then we have the linkable integer. So this class tests and implements the linkable interface, used as the, the driver to implement it. Uh, so integer drives the data that's going to be contained in each one of the nodes are going to contain integers. And there's a reference to the node, next node, and in the list, so linkable next. I, I, next I, next I. And we have two string printed out, we have an equals. And here's our test program down. Here's our main. Here's our test program. It's gonna insert some nodes, remove some nodes, print some stuff to the screen, see what we've got. So here we have a creating a list. Link list LL is equal to a new link list. Insert at the head, insert at the head, insert at the tail, print some stuff out, or remove from the head, remove from the tail. And then um, you know, remove another another one. And you can kind of, kind of, this sort of demonstrates the concept again, the differences between a doubly and a singly. We have more functionality, more flexibility, because we can move in both directions. We can insert it at the tail, we can insert it at the head. So if we wanted a structure, for example, that we wanted to treat as both a queue and a stack, we could implement a doubly linked list as a data structure and run it in both, you know, at certain points in the program we can treat it like a queue. At certain points of the program, we can treat it like a stack. And it can actually be sort of a hybrid structure that we can use. In fact, it can be hybrid in a lot of other ways. We can treat it not like either one. We could just use it in any order that we want and insert in the middle, inserts, you know, the end, um, reorganize the list, and then we have a lot more functionality to it. So if I run this, hopefully it'll work. Let's see. Let's just make sure. And it's just printing out. We were just holding integers, and the uh, system out is just going to go through each one of the items and print out i, print, print out the item. So, and this is going to be the the link, the item, linkable item that we are printing out. So it's just going to be a list of integers. So. Last but not least, did we do a array list example? Let's see what it looks like. Oh yes, we did this one. This is with the had the student in there. This one is like the uh, second assignment, but it has the theme of the first, the students. <laughs> so I didn't actually do any of the assignments for you. Uh, we did the link list. Oh, we just did that a few minutes ago. Did we do the link stack? Yes, we did the link stack. We did YQ. YQ. Yes, we did. That's the one that doesn't compile. We did my stack. Maybe. And then we have. I know we have the reverse coming up. The Q example. Did we do a queue example? I think we did that one as well. Good. Stack example? Yep, we did stack example as well. That's the first one we started with. Last but not least, this is the one here. The string reverse through a stack. <laughs> so all of these other examples aren't really showing you any functionality and the use. And as I mentioned before, stacks are really nice when you want to keep track of the order and pull it off in the reverse order that you pushed it on, essentially, which is kind of like what runtime stacks do and what other type of stacks implementation. So I thought I would show you the implementation of a life, real life-like example of why we'd want to use a stack. And so this one is um, this one's going to actually have some exception handling in it. So I've included the Java IO IO exception package. And we have the class a string reverse through stack reverse through. So we have a string as an input, and we have a string as an output. So we're going to take one string, reverse it, and output it using a stack. So the string reverse through stack input in, the constructor is going to take in a string. And then the string is going to do do reverse, on a do reverse method. It's going to take the stack size as the length of the string, the stack, and create a stack. And the new stack is going to be uh, uh, created with the stack size. So the stack, we are in a built-in functionality actually, uh, equals 
Nope, we're actually making, we're not using the built-in. Quick and easy way of telling is that we haven't imported it. <laughs> if we haven't imported it, we're not using it. And we have our stack down here. What is our stack going to be? So it's going to be a basic generic stack. Stack's going to have a mac maximum size. It's going to be an array stack, array implementation of a stack. Where we've got a character array, and we're going to take and push and pop and peek and is empty. After a while, all the stacks look the same. And most of them, you see, it's probably easier to create it with an array than it is to create it with, uh, I don't know, other objects and things. So the do is going to create a stack, put all the items in the string, character by character, in the stack. So here we have integer i is equal to 0, i is less than the length, character, input character at 1, character at 2, character at 3, push it onto the stack, and then uh, I'll put a space, and then while it's not empty, and we're all done with the characters, after we've gone through the length, output it. And what we're doing is popping them off the stack. It's essentially going through each one and printing out the output. And then in main, we have the starting string, Java, source, and support. And string output is going to be empty right now because we're going to write it, send it to the string output, and then print the string output on the screen. And in, we're going to run it, create a new instance of string reverser through stack. The reverser is equal to new string reverser through stack. Input, which is our string. Output is equal to do reverse method. And then we're going to say the reverse colon. Here's the output. And if we run sucker, and I'm going to assume you guys are already familiar with the concept of the stack. I don't have to go through that over again. And if we run it, It looks like gobbledygook. If we read it backwards, it says Java source and support. So. so what I've done for you is gone through the first two assignments, actually. What you have to do, unfortunately, is figure out how you're going to implement them. Because you've got choices. I didn't show you just one way of doing it. I've shown like three or four different ways of doing it. Main concept is this link list. I don't care if you use the built-in Java link list. That's perfectly fine. In fact, that's probably the preferred method. And use the I.O. exception that's in there. And play around with the I.O. exception. That will definitely be a handy handy thing for you. And the, uh, the reason why that second one is the second one is because we have both in there. And you can implement one with a link list. The other one you don't actually have to do with a link list. I believe the instructions, let me just... Let me just Double check something real quick. Uh, if I can find it. Here we go. Well, this is Wednesday. Uh, uh, number two. Here we go. I believe the uh, require. Nope. Wrong sign. Wrong. Wrong class. Wrong class. Wrong number two is over. This is Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did I do with number two? Data structures number two. Got it. Yeah. No, I had to find the file. There we go. I just wanted to make sure before I quoted, misquoted myself, I wanted to make sure the requirement was in here. One of them asked for a link list for linked implementation. Here we go. Implement and uh, here we go. You can use any array based implementation for your stack based implementation. So your stack can have anything and a link list for implementing your queue. Or you may use any programming method that you want to accomplish the task. <laughs> so if you wish to take the challenge, you can use a linked list for it. But you don't have to. But the linked list queue wasn't really implemented for you. That's the one that had the error message in it. So if you use that one, keep in mind you have to fully implement it as a queue and not a stack. It was a linked stack that was roughly converted but not fully converted correctly to a queue. Um, but again, to reiterate the point, you're more than welcome to use these examples as is, and you can use them as a base for your assignments if you want, and you can modify them. Or you may use any other examples. This is not a programming course. What you're trying to get out of it is the concept of what a queue is, what a stack is, what a linked list is, and putting the pieces together in terms of the interface. Questions? Let me just check on something real quick. We're almost to. We're almost done. I just want to check on something for next week. 
And unfortunately, it's really hard to understand them without actually downloading. So I highly encourage you to download that file I put up there. Take a look at it. I'm waiting for this lecture to load. Here it is. We went through this collections lecture. The collections lecture has the implementations of the collections class. Next week, I believe, I'm going to talk more about the concept of collections in terms of the Java API and give you, without, without boring you, for those people who have taken the Java course, without boring you with the collection stuff from the implementation, show you perhaps a little bit more examples that are showing you things we haven't looked at yet in terms of the collection components. Some of those are the concept of the iterator and then some of the interfaces that we haven't looked at. And the iterator is going to be basically a way of adding an iterator so that we can go through items in a queue or items in a stack, things of that nature. Um, which I believe, the reason why I brought this lecture, I was kind of wondering if, I think the concept of the iterator was mentioned in this lecture, uh, but I don't remember where. Let me just make sure, maybe it was in the other one. Let's just try this one real quick. I know that we covered lecture number three on collections already. We got that far. I remember that part. We actually we actually covered lecture four already too, didn't we? Non nonlinear the list concept. Okay, good. So next time when we meet, we will be on number five. This class is so much farther ahead than the other one. Give this a few minutes here. That way I can tell you what's in store for next week. <laughs> and you guys can remind me <laughs> when I forget. Okay, so number five is on cues. Uh, I'm going to take and go through queues, sort of like I did the stacks, but I don't have to spend that much time on it because it's very similar to the stack concept. And then we'll look at more implementations of the interfaces and of the collections next week. So. Okay, so unless we have any questions, that's uh, all we have for this week. Unless you have any questions. And so right now, although you can't upload anything, you can start working on the first two assignments. And there's, this, you know, it. it Feel free to use academic, uh, uh, what do you call it, freedom and uh, creativity when you um, actually put together those assignments. There's more than one way of doing it, more right. There's no, there's no wrong way of doing it unless you skip the concept in general. So I will leave you with that, and you can go home and do the first two assignments. But they're not due until the end of the course. Okay, see you next time. <laughs>